Hello and welcome in the IBP series powered by Kernot. Today, let's continue the story we started last week. Let's see configuration of the optimizer. So as mentioned, we are at the second stage of the, the optimizer journey. So we will discover the configuration setup and how to run the optimizer for today. In more detail for today, we will see the configuration items as follows. So SNOP profile, what can we do with that? Then we'll see quickly input and output key figures, and then how to launch the optimizer and what can we do out of the optimizer results. Let's discover directly into the system this SNOP profile element. This is a Fury Apps. And here, I have already created the profile, so no need to say it's optimization. Let me open this one and switch in edit mode for better visibility of what I'm going to say. In this profile, there is a number of sections which are, which are the optimizer parameter, and we come back to that. Aggregation, where you want to say the systems I want to plan in weeks, then month, then quarter, for instance, when you are seeking for performance. Uh, then you have the primary parameters, which are also shared with heuristics and additional parameters. Let's start by the end. This is important. If you are seeking for very advanced feature, there is features which are only appearing based on those additional parameters. Go in the online helps to know which parameters you can call in this section. We first decide whether it's a batch or interactive. And as you can see here, it's only batch because one of the parameters has been set here in the general and this is the explain optimization result. When you select this one, you cannot add it anymore in interactive mode in this current version. Okay? And also in this general section, you define the maximum runtime of the optimizer, the very important. Okay, then you can define which objecting, objective functions you want to follow. Is it to maximize the profit or to minimize cost and so on? So this is made by those ones. Okay. Second section, it's more like an advanced topic. In some cases, you, want, you wish to run the optimizer and not having, for instance, decimal point. I don't want the system to tell me you need to produce 1.5 car, for instance. In such case, I would have to call for discretization in the proper section here and say, how long should the system be in discrete mode? Next section is the fair share distribution. Here, this is in the particular case where from a, say, a distribution center, you are delivering to customers. And so then the system will split the possible quantity towards those two guys, in my example, with two customers, by using the fair share distribution to be driven by those parameters. Then time independent penalty costs. As I've explained already in the concept, there is a lot of cost in the systems, and it's about 19 type of cost. And you can decide whether these costs are defined by the detail of each planning object, like a product. Those costs are applied to all, uh, to all planning objects. So you cannot prioritize objects between each other. And whenever it's not activated, you need to define that in the key figure in by the detail. That was time independent. Then we have global cost factor. It's an easy way and smart way to leverage on the cost model by saying, okay, now I want to to have less stock, for instance, and therefore I will go in the inventory, in the inventory violation cost rate and inventory cost rate here, and multiply artificially the these detail costs defined by the product location by a factor of one, two, three, four, five, whatever, and that easily helps you to switch from a scenario to another scenario. But of course, it applies to all inventory holding costs, all target violation costs, and so. On. Then next, the expert setting, because we are in SAP, there is always expert setting. So here, this is more about the calculation capabilities uh, with the decimal point and so on. So let me skip this part. Then you have the product decomposition, which is whenever your optimizer takes too much time, so then you need to decompose in slice of products so that the system optimizes each slice individually which is not the same like optimizing everything, but at least you have a chance to get a result out of the optimizer. Sometimes you cannot do without any decomposition. And also, as you can see here, if I move a little bit, you can start your optimization session by saying to the system, please run first a heuristics, and then from this solution, start improving the solution. Like again, I explained in the previous episode.
You can even add further costs like you can see here. So if we combine the master data model plus the key figure representing the different input costs, which are used by the optimizer, we end up with the so-called cost model. This cost model represents the business scenario that you want to represent in your different uh, sessions of optimization. They are made of 19 types of costs like production cost, inventory cost, transportation cost, and so on and so forth, 19. When maintaining the cost model by entering the different input costs, you must bear in mind that the sum of non-delivery and late delivery costs must always be greater than the sum of all replenishment costs. And this anywhere in the network. Otherwise, like this mentioned at the top, the optimizer doesn't move, doesn't plan at all. Okay? Because it costs nothing not to deliver, therefore I don't do anything. This is the basic statement that the optimizer holds. And also, don't forget that everything is linked together within a mathematical set of equations through the simplex algorithm, which is behind the optimizer, which means that everything is linked together. So a decision taken on one product may influence the, another decision on other products, other locations. So it's definitely not an easy job to maintain the cost model, and that's what in project takes a long time. Let's take an easy example to illustrate the cost model. Here it's a supply network made of couple locations, vendor, plant, DCs, customer, replenish two products A and B against two customers, one and two. And the cost model involves only five types of costs in this case, variable transport production procurement cost, safety stock violation cost in case it goes below safety stock, and also inventory holding cost in case uh, the stock stays some, for some time on location. That to be compared with the non-delivery penalties. Now, if we consider that compared with the data present at the time of the optimizer, that may lead to, okay, the system is willing to replenish product A out of this uh, shape here, involving a number of costs. And in the end, as we can see here, it could be that maybe the product A cost about 150 to be replenished, product B only 100, and product A for the second customer would cost about 300. So for sure, the system will plan first product B, then product A towards customer 1, and possibly customer, uh, customer 2 for the same product A. That's going to be the sequence the system will adopt, and probably because of planning product A and B, consuming the most of the resource, the production resource in all plants, maybe this demand will not be served because there is no resource left out of any factory in the network. So this is an easy example of, a, of an optimizer taking decisions based on cost. And last but not least, whenever maintaining the cost model, think of automation by means of formula. This is not an option to maintain the cost manually. You go directly to the wall. So you need to think automations by formula or copy operator, and formula to be used, for instance, to define things like a telescopic cost, which reduce over time in order to give some possibilities, some opportunities to the optimizer to find solution whenever something is not feasible in the short term, for instance, or, for instance, to establish the consistency of the cost model by introducing formula, which calculates such transportation cost and inventory stock holding cost in order not to exceed the non-delivery cost, which is rule number one. Let's now discuss how to run the optimizer. For that, I'm in here in the job templates, and first, you have to use the proper uh, operator. The version two is the, the needed one. Here, I'm in the version with the explanation tool associated to. So you have also to decide whether you want to use or not the generate data for run, play, uh, run monitor. So I will okay. come. Other than that, these profiles using the explanation uh, options. Therefore, at the bottom, at the bottom of the job, you have further parameters to select what you want to have from the explanation tool. I'm not going to. This is now time to run the job, which is done already. Let me navigate to the system log of the job. And here in the system log, I wish to go to the application log itself, because this one has a number of information which are interesting. 
This is very technical approach here. Sorry for that. This is the way it is. Uh, the first one, to have the breakdown of cost generated by the, the optimizer. It's a graphical presentation. Then in the log, you have a file here. It's a raw data file generated by the optimizer. On top of that, you have the business log here, which is also visible in Excel when you run it and you go to application business log. Planning on monitor will interpret this file by the detail. And in this one, you have a reading tool, which organizes the data by the input and output to the optimizer or from the optimizer. And, and let me focus, for instance, on the output only. And in the output, you see the many type, the many categories of information generated by the optimizer. It's not an end user tool, but at least it's uh, for consultant and during implementation, this is important. For instance, you want to see technically the production plan generated by the optimizer, go to production, and it shows up here on the right. Okay, but not only planning run, but also optimizer results, uh, which one else uh, result info, which are not necessarily key figure based, they are additional information. These are documented in the, in the online help. Huh? The violated transport supply, if any, and so on. So, and here you have really a, a, a treasure of information if you want to understand how was it going during the optimization session. Before we close this episode, let's summarize what we have seen about running the optimizer as in the background. So the sub-profile and the expression checkbox to get the explanation information from the optimizer. Then from the job template definition, don't forget to use the V2 version. And if you need a further and complete information, click the run monitor checkbox. It takes some time and performance. So then from the application log perspective, we have four CSV files, including the business, the business log, application log, and so on, plus one zip file. So to read this CSV file, you may use the application log navigation and then in situ in theory you have the display. It does not always work. Or you go in Excel and analyze the business log. And then to read, uh, the optimizer is giving you some graphical output. Not so, not so interesting. There is a particular application in theory, optimizer run details. And also in theory, there is another application which, uh, which is planning run monitor. And this one reads this zip file. Very interesting, pretty technical, not, an end, not for end users, but very uh, useful when you want to analyze the details of an optimization run. This is it. Hope you appreciate the content of this episode. And now you should be able to see all the elements around the optimizer. Next time, we will see how to use the results themselves and interpret the results of the optimizer. For the time being, don't forget a like yeah. or a subscription. Oh, yeah. Makes my day. See you next time. Bye now. Thank you.